we are broadcasting this. Uh, my name is Ellie Cohen. I'm a medical Qigong practitioner and energy healing coach. Uh, this is Qi Talk. It's, uh, we are changing the topic of what we're talking about in each Qi Talk. It's just 30 minute long and it's really about uh, opening. Uh, it's, well, it started as, as a way to open to open a discussion and to have a Q&A. People can ask questions about traditional Chinese medicine, about Qigong, about our practice. Um, and, uh, and, and it just forms into different things now. But really, the, the message behind it is, is, uh, is how to awaken, awaken our inner healer, uh, giving tips and, um, and recommendation of how to go about self-care and self-health. Self and today we're talking about our immune system, our uh, what we call in Chinese the guardian qi. In traditional Chinese medicine, we call the immune system or the wei qi, uh, w e i qi, which is it's a type of energy <clears throat> that distributes itself by the lungs to the level of the skin and beyond the level of the skin. So it's a protective layer of energy. So it's very different. The, the paradigm in Chinese medicine is very different than what we see in Western medicine. And we're going to talk about it. We started to talk about it last time. We're going to continue today. So welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for coming and taking the time. And one of my favorite uh, things to do as we start is to, to have a little practice. And today practice would be around sound. <clears throat> So our opening ceremony would involve sound, and sound is very, um, very precious. It's, it's a tool that we work with in Qigong, in shamanism. A lot of, uh, if if you think about sound or chanting, you can hear it in a in a church choir. You can hear monk chanting. So chanting and voice and sound vibration or music, for that matter, are very healing. Yeah. So, uh, so the, the vibration of your sound is also a type of energy that we work with consciously in Qigong. And in other tradition, again, we can see it in spiritual realms like church, like monks chanting and music, people listening to music, dancing to music. So sound vibration has a, a big, big part of it. Sound can be really irritating too uh how do we work with sound let's do a little practice opening ceremony so uh thank you for again for joining me let's put the hands on the heart and close your eyes and before we make sound just uh may feel the vibration of your heart so see if you can feel the heartbeat in your chest that's making its own rhythm so movement inside of you like the breath or the heartbeat they also have their own vibration tuning into the body when we tune into the body quietly something miraculous happen And we're gonna we're gonna make a sound of ah just to say that I'm I can start and you can follow me. I'm gonna inhale. And we say ah. And when you say it, just feel the vibration inside of your chest. Ah. Let's do it a few more times. And when you do it, see, continue to do it. And when you do it, see if you can feel like where's the vibration gets to? How far from the vocal cords? Can you hear it in the heart? Can you feel it in your hands? Can you feel it in your belly? How far? How, uh, you know, where is it going to? How far does it travel, these vibration? Uh, and you can change the intonation. You can make it a little softer a little deeper uh, uh, 
and just uh, give it also an intention. So if this vibration would have a message, what would it tell the organs inside of you and the cells in your body? If it has a message to it. So one can, can think about love or healing or send a message of rejuvenation or power or strength or all kinds of different messages that will travel as you making the sound. So give that sound a, a type of energy, like if you want to emit ease to your body or peace or relaxation, or even we know we know in from uh, from uh, testing in real labs that sound vibration can actually breaks up tumors or any areas of pain or stagnation. You just focus your mind on this area and you can actually project the sound into it. So the sound can be the vibration can be softening or opening. What do you want it? What name do you want to give it? Nice. And let's relax our hands to the side. Put it down, keep the eyes closed and feel the vibration in your body. So this is uh, just a little bit on sound vibration. Let's slowly open our eyes. Beautiful. Oh, wow. I opened the eyes and there's more people joined us. <laughs> Hi, Marty. Good to see you. Hi, Anne. So yeah, so uh, I open this with uh, with sound. We open the ceremony with sound because sound is one of the tools in Qigong tradition to uh, to release emotions, to uh, let go of emotion, and to have emotional healing. Yeah, again, we we hear it in uh, in in if you go to church or if you hear a chanting. It, it it's done in all kinds of tradition. It's really universal. People sing and get healing. Uh, people cry. Yeah, people do all kinds of voices, you know. Uh, so uh, the Qigong master were kind of listening to these voices and 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 uh, there's actually uh, ways to release emotions, different emotions from the body doing a certain sound, which is kind of universal based on how humans do sound when they sad or when they're angry and how to release a certain sound. So this is very, very interesting. So how does that relate to immune system? We're continuing our talk uh, about immune system and an emotional distress is one of the one of the uh, kind of silent killer, if you will. Um, you know, emotional distress is causing most of the doctor visits, uh, people going to see doctors because of any 90% because it's related to emotional stress. And low chronic stress is what we are really uh, suffering from. And, uh, mo you know, mo most of people that live in the modern world. Uh, and, and so there's different emotions, there's anger, there's fear, there's anxiety, there's this different, different emotion that goes with, uh, with what we call emotional distress. There's a worry, yeah, there's sadness, there's grief, there's depression. And uh, there's a lot of research was, was done on what happens when a person uh, feel emotional distress and there's a cascading, uh, really a, a, a lot of stuff is happening in the body. First of all, the digestive system is not working as well. You cannot absorb nutrients out of the food as much. And, uh, you know, your, your mind doesn't work uh, very sharp, you know, because the blood goes into the 
into the limbs and not to the oxygen goes into the the limbs because it's a fight or flight response so in the past when you are uh you know running away for your life from a, a bear the energy would go into the muscle so you can run away but now the energy still goes there but there's no bear and that's what causes stiffness and stagnation because we always we are tensing even though we're not exercise we're not running away from anything that's why exercise is so good for you because it actually get the body to move we release uh, the stress so the stress is is uh, is in the mind and it transforms into the body in in a form of uh, of muscular tension <clears throat> so from physical to emotional to to mental it it, it transform and so so uh, research is done uh all kinds of, of um, you know research about what is what is happening and there's there's a lot of things that are happening in the body we said the digestive system not the the mind doesn't work very clearly there's actually um, the functions of the internal organs is not is is not the best you know so things are things are kind of like you're you're not at your best when you're in emotional distress and um, the worst emotion for the immune system that's what they found is actually depression so sadness and grief the emotion of sadness and depression is the is lowering your immune cell your your um there's actually a way to to check immune cells and the depression is the the worst from anger from all the other ones depression is the worst and the one, the emotion that is best for your immune system is love. That's why everybody wants to be in love. <laughs> Everybody's looking for love. We're all looking for love. We're all going on vacation to feel love, to open our heart. We're looking all the time uh, to, for things that can, we can feel good. So we are kind of looking, how can we feel good? <laughs> and how can we, because it feels it feels good, our immune system is, is good. As what interesting about depression and sadness, like why is that the most, um, uh, the, most the, the, the hardest emotion in terms of uh, your immune system? And in Chinese medicine, it's because it, it attacks the lungs. So sadness and depression attacks the lungs. And the lungs in Chinese medicine, we call it the white palace, the white palace. And inside of the white palace, there's the heart, which is the emperor. So the emperor sits in the white palace. So the, the palace is, the, is a very important place. If you think about a palace in the city, yeah, it's kind of like a metaphor, but it's very beautiful and poetic in Chinese medicine, all these explanation. If you learn a little bit of Chinese medicine, it's really poetic and beautiful and we can, um, so a palace is, is some, it, it really governs the whole, the whole country. A palace is a place where everything is being governed. Everybody meets it in the palace. The, the orders are being uh, uh, given from the palace to the whole country. And the palace is a very, very important place. The lungs are being seen as the palace and, uh, and the quality of your breath would regulate your immune system and uh so it's interesting to see that a study in that is being done by researchers found that actually sadness and depression is 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 the one to hit the immune system the most so um that's why we're doing our qigong practice for for the for the fall this is what we do in on the thursday noon practice we do a, 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 a whole, the whole practice is about lung health so there's a lot of breathing technique there's a lot of visualization their sound vibration all has to do with how to support the lungs so in chinese medicine we see the lungs not only as a physical organ yeah it's kind of a little bit hard to think about it that way because we learn for so many years since we were born that we go to the doctor because you have some some physical problem but it's not related to how emotionally you feel but in chinese medicine it's all connected spiritual emotional physical it's all connected it moves across we know it if we stress we tense 
So matter and mind are inter are connected. And so the emotions of sadness would attack the lungs. So what does it mean that we shouldn't be sad? <laughs> you know, we uh, sometimes, uh, so the best way to, uh, to transform emotions in Chinese medicine, in Qigong, we say is actually to yield to it to not really think too much about it. And there's a whole, uh, there's a whole workshop that we did. I think it's available on, on the product line. It's called uh, Qigong for Emotional Resilience. Uh, so you can look at that, but uh, there's a whole technique of how to transform emotions from sadness. And then the, on the other side, it would be courage and inspiration. So there's, it's, it's a whole system but in as a tip <laughs> as as just kind of talking today you know the way to to release emotion is to feel it moving through you because uh, uh, an emotion is a felt sense so the way to metabolize it the way to digest it we actually in chinese medicine talk, talking about digesting emotions is to get out of the thinking mind you know you know, if if the sadness is a, a, the subject of the of of this, you are sad because of A B C, is not to rationalize and think about it, but to actually feel the emotion itself, to actually be in it. You see, children's doing it very well. If they're feeling sad, they just cry. They cry, 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 and then they stop. And then a minute later, they would laugh and they would just release the emotion. They just let it go. And we are, we are, we are not, we, for whatever reason, how we grow up, we say, oh, you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be crying. Don't cry. You know, people, uh, we grew up, <laughs> at least I did too, uh, putting a little bit of a break on emotional expression. So, um, you know, how can we feel back how the, the emotion as an energy in motion? And that's what emotions mean, energy in motion. And uh, the way to it is to get out of the, the thinking mind. And, and I, I think the, the, hardest, the hardest thing to do is to do it with anger. Because <laughs> I've been working out for a while on this. <laughs> and really the hardest thing is when you are angry, when somebody makes you angry, you're just going to the head. You're thinking, oh, this guy did this and this to me. And to get out of this and to understand that everything is happening within your system. Nothing is outside of you. Everything is inside of you. Because our perception of the reality from the outside is different from a person to person. But then you can tell me, no, everybody would think that he's the wrong and I'm right. <laughs> everybody. And this is how we do it. Yeah, anger is the why anger is so hard because anger is comes from the liver and it rise up to the head. So the energy actually of anger rise up. That's what the energy does. It rise up. We say hot headed, right? For a person that is angry, right? And the language really describe what energetically is happening. The energy goes up to the head and it's very hard not to think, not to be in the cerebral mind. But like for sadness or depression, the energy is about is sinking, is heavy. It's actually the opposite of going up. It's going down. It's weighing us down. So you actually feel heavier. Yeah, that's why we say winter blues. Why, why we say winter blues? Because when it's raining, the actually atmospheric heaviness, the heaviness of the rain, the, the, it, the heaviness is very similar to heaviness of, of sadness or depression. It's the water element. Yeah. So in, in uh, dealing with depression, dealing with, uh, with sadness and grief, we want to actually elevate the energy. And there's exercises and there's sound vibration and there's, and there's the opposite organ that always helps us to balance the organs that is being affected. Like for depression, the heart, if you go on the Chinese medicine scale, you go two, two organs back and then this is the heart and the heart so connection and love would heal sadness and grief and depression. Yeah, so we always go to the opposite. And anger would be the lungs, actually deep breathing. Yeah, when somebody's angry, we still have to take a deep breath, right? Because breathing, regulating the breath would help anger. 
opening the heart to love would help with sadness and depression. So, uh, <clears throat> so this is, uh, this is from the emotional perspective of our immune system and, and, uh, really, uh, and la last time we talk about more of a physical, um, you know, how to breathe. And we talked about the Wei Qi breathing, and this is also very good. The Wei Qi breathing is a technique to pressurize the system, you know, and so you have to understand it. So when, when you want to get more immune system, the Wei Qi to increase, it's almost like a tire. You want to inflate the tire. Yeah. When the tire inflate, when you hit it, everything bounces back, right? Doesn't it? everything bounced back and then when the tire deflated it's not it's not so how you pressurize the system and that's the that's the energy of the lungs and the energy of the breath and if your system you see people that are opening the chest they're feeling proud they're walking you feel, you feel all oh, the energy is is up it's like an inflated tire <laughs> and depression is sinking like everybody's like this right curling and down and kind of like the shoulders shrug down like down and you're feeling kind of the tire is not as deflated so that is a part of what we do uh in energetically we want to pressurize the system and that's what we do in the away chi breathing and uh, again it's uh if you like to um uh, oh, Gail just added something. Screaming sometimes helps. Yeah, primal screaming releases energy. Right, right. And that's 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 really part of the. Thank you, Gail. Yeah, this is part where we talked about uh, chanting and and speaking out and um, singing or yes, yeah, screaming. You know what happened to me is our is our heater and air condition blew up today prior to leaving on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah so you dealt with it in in your in your primal way <laughs> you released the energy <laughs> good good job yeah so here we go so gail shared of how she uh, used sound vibration to release to release her frustration <laughs> is that right <laughs> yes thumbs up okay uh so so it's interesting to talk about emotions and about about a lung, which is an organ, right? Something like that. If you talk to a Western doctor, he would tell you, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, and in Chinese medicine, we go between the two very easily and to pressurize the system. How can you get, so we took talking about immune system. It's all about outside pathogen, not wanting them to, to come into your energy system. So you have to create a strong internal energy. And how do you create it? How do you create it? So one, one thing is the lung. They distribute the Wei Qi. And the way you pressurize the system with the Wei Qi breathing technique is the way to go. Uh, that's the, the kind of like the, the breathing practice that is for immune system. And, uh, and going again, going about emotional, emotional distress is is not about not feeling it because <laughs> you know that it's bad to feel sad it's actually about feeling it and expressing it and and to transform it uh you know one exercise is very is very nice is uh is to to go into a quiet room and to ask yourself what would it take to change this what can i do to change this and Screaming is something, you know, intuitively, Gail just said that emotional, uh, we have in Qigong a, a whole protocol of, 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 of different sound for different emotions. And uh, sometimes you, when you ask yourself this question, when you ask yourself a question, the subconscious mind already answered the answer. Even though if you don't have the answer right away, when you go and you say, what what can I do to change that? And you just leave it at that. You'll see that you'll find the way. Um, you know, asking yourself a question uh, is is one of the most powerful way to change uh, to change energy. Uh, but uh, you know what people do is complaining a lot. 
right? Complaining and then complaining is just continuing the victim cycle, <laughs> right? Because when you complain, you're actually being a victim. You're actually putting yourself in the victim. Something is happening to me. So you are incapable of doing anything about it. Of course you can. You can choose to change it if you can or leave it or accept it. So you can do something about it. You can accept it. I do it a lot. I, ex <laughs> I, ex <laughs> I cannot, something I cannot change. It's just accept. Okay, we have to walk with masks now, you know? Not really fun, but what can you do? Uh, and, and some, uh, so how can we, <laughs> so that's another subject complaining. It's very, <laughs> it's a whole chi talk. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to stop here. Cause I think, I think that's good enough for, for that. I see that we're, uh, I want to just open it to anybody that want to add something. Uh, yeah, Edward, go ahead. So, uh, again, my mantra is always thinking is the lowest form of human ability because the thought like, oh, I'll go home and they'll be very mad at me or something. It, it's not the truth. So the minute I, I know that's a thought, you know, I, I do something to get rid of it. But a long time ago at the JCC, you taught us something about changing energy and I use it all the time. And that is banging my heels down. <laughs> and it shifts. And I can take that energy like you started out with the breathing and making a sound to get rid of it with the vibration. When I bang my heels down, I could feel it right up into my head. Yes. Changes the energy of what was being thought of or a negative emotion. So banging the heels. Thank you for that one. I've used it a lot. Oh, awesome. This is this is wonderful. I love when when people bring things from Qigong uh, and, and into into like what 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 helps what helps you and it, it does help it, the, the banging on the hill the grounding the energy and you can feel the vibration kind of like the vibration of the sound but a different way the heels also ground the energy so the energy whatever energy you have you can you can ground it through through banging the heels on the floor that's true that's that's part of shaking x is like a, a variation of it thank you edward that's awesome i love it anybody else wants to add something or should uh, yeah anybody else want to add something or should we go into uh closing let's see bart yeah, okay so about depression i thought depression was also a natural process but it seems like it's bad for the immunity. So, um, so chronic depression is really bad for us. So, but also going through the depression is also important. You know what I mean? Seems, yeah. seems like nature is telling us that depression is really bad. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's uh, whenever the energy become extreme, like a chronic a chronic situation <clears throat> it affects not only the lungs it affects all the organs so like in in the in the in the lungs it would be depression like sadness is is a period when you are sad you can grieve for a little a little while and that's good whenever the situation become chronic like depression like chronic depression and it it can it can go into other other um yeah, other organs have also their chronic situation also like anxiety for the heart and things like that. Whenever it becomes chronic, it affects all the organs. So because the lungs are, are there's a sinking of the lungs, then uh, it would affect the kidney and it would affect the heart and it would affect all the organs. And, uh, and that's the time to really take a step towards uh, whenever it becomes chronic, whenever it becomes on a regular basis, then that then it becomes an intervention is necessary. Uh, and practice is necessary to, um, to, to, to shift this energy, you know, and, um, and so yes, it's important to feel to feel it, and not to ignore it. And actually to like what, what, what we said to go through the the thing but if it's chronic 
then we want to treat it. We want to do Qigong regularly. We want to know how to, uh, how to, uh, you know, there's different, different, there will be different Then, if, if that's the case, I would probably would want to work with somebody more like one-on-one -on, -one on this and, and give them uh, specific uh, practices to do on a daily basis uh, to, uh, to treat this, uh, this chronic situation. Cause, uh, cause, uh, it, 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 if it continues for a long, long time, it really affects not only the lungs, but the entire organ system. And then you're feeling when it affects the kidney, what happened? What is the kidney willpower? So no ambition, you know, the kidney is about willpower and ambition, right? And feeling zest of life. That's the kidney. And so if the lung doesn't nourish the kidney, because there's a, 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 an ongoing grief for a long, 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 long period of time, then it affects your willpower. And then that willpower will affect the liver. And, and again, again, it's a cycle. So we, we, we want to start to get out of this. And we want to start to kind of, um, uh, you know, I've, this is this is a really, really good question. Thank you so much for asking it, because that's what I was thinking. A lot of people would say, what, so I'm not going to feel sadness? It's good to feel sadness. It's good to cry. It's good to to feel what you feel and go through it. And even if it's for a, a long period of time, but at some point, if it becomes um, really long, a chronic situation, then you want to do something about it. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, I understand better now. And is it true that depression is suppressed anger? Depression suppressed anger. Uh, Gail, what do you want? Yeah, Gail, what do you want? Gail wants to. That one aspect that I've learned uh, is that depression can sometimes be anger that you don't feel that you have a right to have or to express. So why I'm reiterating that Ellie is you are right on the mark where you need to move that as it relates to the body you have to move it into perhaps anger lift it up when you're depressed all emotions get suppressed so if you can get angry at your depression then you have a sense of movement does that make sense that's that's interesting. It does relate. Uh, uh, it's true. In Chinese medicine, we say that uh, unexpressed anger causes frustration and that attacks the lungs, because if you look at the chart again, the liver and then the heart and then we have the lungs. So so uh, if we are not expressing uh, our our ourselves or our anger, we're not we, we, it becomes frustration and frustration causes depression. It would attack the lung, so the liver would attack the lung ev eventually. Uh, but your question was, what was your question again? I'm sorry. Your question was uh, my if, question. Yeah, and uh, it was. I was asking, is it true that depression is actually suppressed anger? Yeah, it could be. So I think yeah, I that when I did psychology years ago. But... Yeah, yeah. So it could be. That's one. That's one way. Uh, that it's one way. It's 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 a it's a way that uh, one way that depression can happen through through that pathway through the liver through not expressing anger and then frustration and then frustration causes the the lungs to to sink so so that's one way yeah yeah it is and so to resolve the chronic depression it would be good to express your anger much more often feel it feel it and uh feel it and uh yes like stand for yourself and um uh yeah this is uh this is this is part of it if it's if it's if it's through anger I, I'm interesting like what gail said just like feel the anger towards the and that would move that would mobilize it because what's what's that's an interesting that's an interesting view we don't think about, we, we don't really use it in the Chinese medicine but it's interesting view and an interesting technique that I think might work because sadness and depression is very heavy is a very heavy energy and anger is actually very up that's why I compared the two when I started so anger going up 
it's up energy and and the depression going down is very heavy energy that's hard to mobilize and so if you it's interesting and mobilize it through anger that could be that could be an interesting thing but and courage is the other um uh yeah that if we're talking about a, a good lung chi then courage so the the courage is there's a lack of courage okay? yeah so if you're angry and there's no courage you concave always yeah so courage is part of the lung so if the lung is depleted or affected by sadness or grief uh there's no courage courage also uh, inspiration inspiration is lacking so visualization would help a lot you know visualization would help a lot like what do you want to see what do you want to create in the future i know it's hard for you, people depressed it's like think about what's your dreams and they're like they don't have any dreams for the future right because the the because the lung chi is really um really is going down uh but uh I hope that makes sense. We we were, I don't want to get into it too too much into different um, like more medical, but yeah, definitely if there's depression, there needs to be uh, a way, uh, a protocol, a prescription. That's medical qigong. We give prescription, a daily prescription of what what is the practices should be to lift up the lung qi. So so yeah, thank you, Bart. Thank you so much. Good to see you all. Let's keep it on time. So I'm, I'm gonna, let's close it with a little bit of ceremony. Let's uh, get the hands up like this by the head. And when we and close your eyes and oh, don't close your eyes because you don't see what I'm doing with my hands. <laughs> and then and then when we when we when you go down with the with the hands and saying the uh, this inhale and then we go down uh, and feel the vibration continue to do it i'm just gonna talk through it <clears throat> i don't i cannot do the song this the sound and talk at the same time so when you do this sound just think about what you want to emit with the vibration feel the vibration in your vocal cord emitting chi to the body and have you know you can think about joy or work with a with a vibration of a of a word like love or peace or ease or whatever it is you can think about so going up inhale and One more, inhale. And now one in a whisper without making the vocal uh, sound. Nice. Keep your eye closed after the one with the whisper. And make the sound in your mind without making actually a sound, not even a whisper, just thinking about making the sound. And the sound is attached to the vibration, to joy and love or whatever you want to emit into your cell as an organ. can see a smiley face on each cell in your body. And what are you grateful for today? Let's think about three things that you're grateful for today. Maybe the, maybe the sky is blue today. <laughs> what are you grateful for? Nice. Open the eyes. Beautiful. All right. So <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, I hope you felt the vibration of the sound and how it how we work with the sound. There's a little 
a little example. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, uh, Lance. Thank you, Bart, Gail, Marty, Corinne, Edward. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in class uh, tomorrow, tomorrow night. Good night, Qigong. Bye now.